Hello there, I'm Redcoat. My channel is all about vintage lenses, with a preference for the 60s. The channel's names derive from the lenses with special coatings. Those with a red T or a red R mark at the lens name's plate, or those coated with thorium. I introduce each lens brief history, its optical design, bouquet and flare, saturation, aberration, sharpness and vibrance, all without post-processing. The Hanser, a film emulation plug-in for editing software that covers different video or photography platforms, offered me to collaborate with them. It seems contradictory to me when I introduce you to pictures from those vintage lenses without any post-processing, and now I am grading it with the Hanser. But it is not, and why? The picture in raw format, you evaluate the lens, then you may go further. In collaboration with the Hanser, I took the three of rehoused KMZ lenses, the Mir 1B, Helios 44 II, and Jupiter 9. The camera was my BMPCC 6, recorded in raw format. I started recording before the golden hour until the blue hour. My system is an Apple M1 Max with 64GB memory, Ventura 13.5 and editing software is DaVinci Resolve version 18.6. Once the enhancer is installed in your system, at the project settings, master settings, time resolution choose 1920x180 for editing and color management to color science DaVinci YRGB. Enable the use separate color space and gamma. Timeline to color space REC709 gamma. And the output color space to same as timeline. There are three simple ways to apply the plugin. At the editing panel, you can use an adjustment clip to apply the effect over video 1. Or make a compound clip and apply the plugin. Or at the color tab by notes. For the present review tutorial, I feel more comfortable working on this plugin under the color tab. Under the library menu, you scroll the menu down until you see the answer. Here you see three nodes. The first node is the raw footage, the second is the primary balance, and the last is the answer. Once the answer is applied, we will be prompted by this long list menu and if the viewer screen is full of film grain, don't be alarmed. It is customizable. Scroll down till the end of the menu and click the button for registering activating of your dehancer. Scroll up the film menu. A button for downloading all the film profiles will be here. And once downloaded, you are ready to go. I encourage you to click on each kind of film profile. Look at them and take your time. Are you ready? Let's roll. According to the answer, their film profile is designed for source material with neutral white balance, applying 5300 Kelvin for daylight and 3200 Kelvin for incandescent bulb. My footage covers this time lapse, recorded in raw format. If you change from raw to clip, you can adjust the temperature tint and exposure, but let's get back to RAW. As a side note, always pay attention to the histogram during recordings to get the correct exposure and avoid unnecessary post work. You are working on the answer, forget your LUTs, you made it. The answer says, all films naturally have different contrasts, different black and white points. Real film roles act this way. And this is what differentiates rookies from pros when choosing a certain film for the designated work. Input. At input, you choose the source of REC709. Exposure, temperature, tint, and the fringe I left untouched because my footage was properly recorded. And if my lens the fringe, I am playing analog. Film. I first jump to film menu. Regarding workflow, I would prefer to choose the film profile first, then adjust the film developer followed by film compression parameters.
To reduce time in this review tutorial, I have previously chosen the Kodak Air color, which is a film with medium speed and very fine grain color negative with broad application. This film base will be applied to my entire project. The push-pull is untouched. No compensation is need. Film developer is a personal touch to your liking. You dial in the amount according to your needs or how much your footage can set. I found these parameters looking good in my footage. Contrast boost means the degree of density of the ratio between the maximum and the minimum brightness value. In developing a photo, the length of time spent in development will affect the contrast. If you leave the photo paper on the developer for a longer time or shake it, contrast increases and for a shorter time, less contrast. Gamma is a measurement of development contrast, but in this case, gamma correction parameter shifts the midtones towards shadows or highlights. Film compression. The enhancer allows you to fine tune the redistribution of highlights, providing more flexibility for further manipulation with exposure and contrast. Impact. If you push higher values, highlights are backward into the midtones. White point. Lowering the white point increases the clipping at the highlights. Tonal range at 100 affects the white range from the brightest highlights almost all the way down to the deepest shadows. Expand. If you are an experienced Photoshop user, those parameters are easier to explain. Think of the raw correction menu, where black point you are lifting up the shadows and white point decreasing the highlights. My numbers are minus 2.58 and 99.3. Print and color head. I'm skipping those because I'm working on video editing software, but it came in handy to if you don't own any photography editing software and you need that frame photo for reference. Film grade. The photographer thinks first before purchasing. In this simulation, looking convincing or not really depends on the size, amount, and resolution applied to the footage. The enhancer has put so much effort into sampling each film profile, providing three versions of ISO, 50, 250, and 500. To customize the size, amount, resolution, and other parameters, you first select the film size and approximate ISO and after select custom mode. When you find just the seven parameters here, I recommend always paying extra attention to the scopes. Your eyes may not perceive the subtle change or your monitor resolution may not show exactly the changes, but your scopes indicate it. And when the values applied are elevated, notice your scopes. It's likely apply a dissolved blending mode in your scopes. I am using a positive film type as the green the highlights is softer and less pronounced and negative is just the inversion. Halation and bloom. I explain in the next session. Film damage. The smaller the film format, artifacts appear with more frequency and in bigger size. Film breadth can be the instability of a camera shutter, uneven emotion coatings or its development which affects the exposure, color and contrast. The smaller the film format is, the more obvious the effect. It's a super analog feel. I love it. Gate wave. For short, a film jittering caused by irregularities of a roll of film when travels through the film gate. I love this analog effect too and I apply it in conjunction with film breadth. LUT generator. All previous parameter settings will be kept without film damage. I'm exporting the LUT in normal size and here's the Dehancer REC709 Kodak Aero Color. And now let's compare them.
About halation and bloom. Halation adds around bright light sources, highlights and specular red-orange halos, contrasting edges. Bloom, a light dispersion on the boundaries of contrasting edges area. Check in the mask box of these two effects, show you where the effect is applied. I use a lation plus boom in pairs, producing a glow effect. My conclusions about the Hanser. The Hanser is an open source standard for 2D visual effects, not to be used in Fusion. Their film profiles were sampled with their characteristics, making a convincing simulation. With a rule of film for photography, can't make scene. Now you do. When I was 18, at secondary, I was introduced by my teacher to black and white photography, developing photos by myself in the darkroom facility of the school. Later, Fuji Color 100 and Kodak Ektar 100 came into my possession because I just could afford them, and for once, Alpha, Alpha Color 100. Green for Fuji, yellow for Kodak, and U4 for Never because at the time it was expensive. Buying a roll of film and then developing it was not a hobby for a student. Plus, if the shots were wrong exposed or defocused, a bigger disappointment was. Photography was not easy, requiring you if that shot was worth it, the exposure and focusing right. For each photograph had to pay the price. But now with the answer, without purchasing in real. Famous film bases are under my single click. I have chosen the Kodak Aero color, knowing its characteristics, expensive and only sold in bulk, and is totally customizable. My workflow to the enhancer is as simple as can be. At the primary balance, I made an expansion of the tonal range with plenty of red room to highlights and shadows, as you normally do when applying a LED avoiding a boom to the floor and ceiling. The enhancer acts differently, providing headroom for later grading. Sharpness was not applied to my footage. What my lenses captured was captured. Have you ever seen any analog photos with very sharp details like digital ones? That's not convincing. For halation and bloom, you get the best results if you are shooting for that purpose, like my LH lens flare, a touch of glow, and they work till the blue hour. What the enhancers needs to correct is the annoying menu auto expanding. Each time I get back to the enhancer, its menu is auto expanded. Relocate the film menu first, then the film developer followed by film compression and the workflow will be smoother. If the enhancer could add light leaks, film head, and film burn will be nice. And for last, another plugin covering analog lens flare and lens bouquet from the famous Myers, Pentax, and Zeiss B-Speeds.